someone to change their goals and, you know, alter their performance. Um, and I think it's kind of just like slippery slope because then all of a sudden you're, you're essentially fixing games, right? Like that's what happens with like sports betting when you hear about college players like fixing the spread and stuff, right? Um, so, you know, like, like who, you know, whose shoulders does that fall on? Is that Jeff or Pat or me or Chandler or, you know, all the other guys in the top 10? Like do all of a sudden we have to just kind of like slow down so Roman gets what? First, second, third, fourth, whatever that is. Um, and then, and it's super heartbreaking that Roman got injured. Like I didn't want him to get injured. Of course, uh, I don't want anyone to get injured, but it's just like, sometimes accidents happen. And then the other thing that's interesting. So again, like I hadn't even thought of that and I just started seeing some comments about it and I didn't want to reply to them because it kind of, I feel like I needed a bit of a longer form place to sort of talk about it mm-hmm. and something could be taken out of context. Cause I think some people are like, Oh, what an honorable thing to do. And if someone else wants to do that in the context of some other sport like that's up to them to do that um i think what's also hard to understand is when you watch the competition unfold and then things happen in a certain way it's easy to like draw inferences and you're kind of watching from a distance and you're watching crossfit and you're thinking like oh why didn't he go faster or wow he's going so he makes it look easy etc cetera, etc cetera. um but when you're actually out there uh <laughs> It's, it's not so like I've seen the videos of, uh, you know, like the marathon runner. He's like cramping right before the finish line. And then the other guy kind of like helps him across. Cause it's like, oh, you know, you deserved it. Or, you know, someone maybe gets like pushed by a, a crazy fan at the last second. And then, you know, the second place guy is like, no, like only that crazy fan was the reason, you know, you so you deserve to win kind of thing. And so in the context of like a singular race on like a track, I can understand how that would be a, a possibility. Uh, but the reality of me going into that last event was I needed to finish, I think it was eighth or better to beat Roman. But if Chandler Smith was to win that workout, I still would, I would have needed to be within like five places of Chandler's and I would have needed to be like fifth. So if I had finished eighth and Chandler had finished first in that workout, Roman would have been actually like fifth place and I would have been fourth. Chandler would have been on the podium. Um, not to mention I ended up finishing, I think it was 14th in that workout and Dallin Pepper finished first, so he almost beat me. So if I'd finished 15th or 16th and let off the gas to let Roman win, all of a sudden, Dallin Pepper comes fourth, I come fifth, Roman comes third. Maybe if I come last in that workout, Yonikoski also jumps me, but Chandler could have jumped me too if he had done better. So I would have had to have known every single score from the prior heat and then be actively predicting the scores and the times of everyone in my heat and then be running the math in my head determining where do I exactly need to finish to allow Roman to come third and me to still come fourth. But let's say if Chandler was making a crazy run at it, I'm like, well, I'm not going to let Chandler come third and then me come fifth and then Roman come fourth. So I'm going to try and be Chandler. So I'd be making all these decisions on the fly while like being exhausted. And so what my strategy was, was to try to go as fast as I could. And I ended up going out a little bit too fast, which is why my lunges broke down. Um, my legs just got really tired. I'm usually very good at over at walking lunges. So I thought, oh, I can get there a little more fatigued and still hammer them out. In hindsight, I should have went a little slower and then hammered them because I'm good at them. And so I did my best with a not so great strategy, but I did my best and I still came 14th. So if I had let off the <laughs> gas at all, you'd be talking to the seventh or eighth fittest man in the world right now. So it's just like you can't, if you let off the, your foot off the gas, um, at a competition like that, you're, you know, there's sharks in the water. So, yeah. <laughs> um, that's my, that's my, I guess like all of that to say, like it's to like fix it and to try to, I get why people maybe saw that. And I can understand why they think that that maybe would have been an honorable thing to do. But even if I'd wanted to do that, it would have been basically impossible. Uh, and then I didn't want to do that because i just don't think that's how sports should be played um in in my opinion if someone else wants to do that it's like that's that's totally up to them and if you think i should have done that then you can think that too but i'm sure you got some entertaining like theories as to why and how it all played out because i I know it was running wild for a little bit is there any that just kind of made you chuckle that the the effort that got put into something of that nature oh i mean yeah and and you know i yeah, it's great to see like fans of the sport, you know, that they're like they're diving in there, they're rewatching the workout, and I think like sometimes, you know, I even came back and I was speaking with uh, um, Jeremy Meredith, who's been helping me at the games, or sorry, he's been helping me the last year with my strength, and Jeremy's been to the games in 2011 and 2012, and uh, you know, he was we were talking about Helena, and he was like, oh, you know, he's talking about it, and I was kind of like. 
he was kind of just the way he was saying, it, I'm like, what do you think happened in Helen? And he was talking about it. And, and I think I have a very, I don't look as tired as I am. And in, in some workouts, definitely I get like the pain face, but there's a lot of workouts where I can be pretty like serene and have this like pretty calm demeanor. Um, and I was telling him, I'm like, man, in Helena, I felt like I was like actually on fire. Like basically after the finish of the first round, like I felt like my entire body was like just about to explode, but I watch it and it just looked like super smooth and easy. It's like, Oh, if you just would have, you know, and then you look at that and you watch that and it's easy for me even looking back and I'm like, Oh, why didn't I go a little bit faster there? And then two more seconds, that's three more places. That's 15 points. You know, you start to do all this crazy stuff and it's like, Mm -hmm. If you could have went faster, you would have. And so then, yeah, you know, I've looked back, I've watched that finale workout, and I didn't look tired. I'm like, what are you doing? Why are you putting it down? I'm like, no, I was melting. Like, I couldn't <laughs> feel my legs. You know, I, I like got the bar overhead. I did. This was right near the end. I was like, all right, Brent. Yeah, I think it was 12 feet left. Like, 12 feet left. You can do this, like, one step, two step. And then it was just like, and this one just, like, just fell. And, it, and then I'm like, well, I guess that's that. Like, you know, mm-hmm. there's nothing I could have done. I was like, cueing all the right things was pushing up and just like body was like yeah i think you're you know time out so yeah so i think it's easy when you when you watch to 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 see certain things um but like when you're in the driver's seat and like the car is on fire uh, (laughs) it's a little it's a little different you know So, so let's get into your, your performance at the CrossFit Games because I was looking at your results the past couple of years coming into 2023. So uh, 2019, 23rd, uh, 23rd place, 2020, 15th. Then you come back in 2021, you finished third, 2022, uh, 16th. So three of your last four years coming into this year, you were you know, 15th or lower. What did you retool, if anything, going into, you know, coming out of last year, going into this year to make sure that didn't happen again? Yeah, uh, great question. So um, I would say, like, retooled quite a few things. Um, definitely added in some more, like, steady state, lower intensity cardio work. Um, added in a lot more running. That was the big one. Uh, you know, a bunch of reasons why I wasn't running before. Some Mostly intentionally, sometimes some injuries and stuff with, like, just little injuries here and there, but added in a lot more running uh, the last 12 months and it slowly but surely paid off and it kind of didn't really rear its head until semis when I was like, okay, I did pretty good in that, like the sprints with the 800 meter run and even the first workout, it was mostly about the sled, but I still had a pretty good split time on the air runner. But then it's, you know, still kind of made a secondary leap again um, at the game. So yeah, a lot more time running, you know, working with Jeremy Meredith on some strength stuff, like changing how I braced, uh, in my deadlifts and how I set up my deadlifts and uh, changing how I kind of braced and set up for my squats a little bit as well. Just like subtle things that take a long time to fix. It seems so simple now. Um, and then just like hammering away and, you know, I, so I basically, I kind of look back and um, I've been working on handstand pushups, for example, you know, since the dawn of time, um, <laughs> <laughs> basically. And, uh, the dawn of time, 2014. There's the monolith, the apes, and then there's Fikowski up against the monolith doing... <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, so like, you know, chest bars and strict handstand pushups have always been a weakness. And so I feel like I've pretty much tried everything. And then I sort of went back and um, I tried a few things at the beginning of the year. They didn't work. And then kind of mid-year, January, February, I had an injury... Uh, from Wadapalooza that meant I couldn't press for like, you know, two, three months kind of. And then finally got into it and, uh, you know, look back at, okay, when, when were my handstand pushups the best? And I think that was like an interesting question that I asked myself. And so I had this expression with a, yeah, I think sometimes we can, I can, and like all of us, like we're trying different things. We're trying to find what works. And so like if something works, you're like, okay, cool. Yeah. Ooh, I heard about this other thing. And you kind of like jump around and, so I tried to like go back and take the pieces of like what worked in my in years prior like okay I was working with this local triathlete coach leading into 2016 leading into 2017 even quite a bit in 2021 and I'm like huh those were like my best finishes hey yeah interesting you know <laughs> and then I'd like dr- drift away from working with Luke Way from Balance Point Racing for a bit and now I'm like okay like we need to bring him back into the fray and like use what we learned from him and like keep that and don't change it too much, but obviously that worked, but sometimes something works so well and you try and do something else. So I did the same thing with the, with the pressing and the pulling and found like, went back to some old programs. I was like, Oh, I was like pretty good at handstand pushups at the, 
the 2021 quarterfinal workout. It's on YouTube if anyone wants to watch it. And there's three sets of 10 strict. And I was like, first set of 10, I felt like I was getting air underneath my hands. I was pushing the pushing up so fast. And I'm like, well, I must 